Astra starts its recovery testing, plus some other interesting updates. Dare has some sad news about the Stratos program, but also some interesting news about the development of their new liquid rocket. And finally, Purdue Space Program starts its testing with their new hybrid rocket. This is your amateur rocketry news. We start first as always with Astra. Over the past couple of weeks we've been hard at work developing a testing rig which we can use to test our recovery system for the shock forces that we expect during the parachute deployment. In order to simulate these forces we actually ended up designing what kind of looks like a guillotine. Basically we're using gravity in order to simulate the shock forces by letting a weight drop and then as soon as it reaches the bottom and is going relatively fast the shock that's created when it hits the bottom of our rig is what creates those shock forces. You can find out a lot more about the testing campaign that we did with this particular setup in the video that we did here. The overall summary is that our recovery frame was actually not quite up to the challenge of surviving the shock forces. Although the system did pass some of the initial shock testing, it was ultimately unable to withstand the full shock forces that we wanted to be able to in order to withstand the deployment of the parachute. So we're actually going to need to make some design changes to the frame of the recovery system in order to reinforce it to withstand these forces. This should take a couple of weeks and we'll definitely be back testing the system again to make sure that we get it right this time. But it's not just the recovery team that's been hard at work for the last couple of weeks. The structure team has also been working in order to start their manufacturing process. We're going to be using carbon fiber in order to make the tube which makes up the main body of the oxidizer tank of our rocket Transcendence. It's a hybrid rocket that's using nitrous oxide and paraffin wax in order to power its way all the way to the carbon line. So in order to do this you need to make a really big structure and also one that's pretty light. And the unique thing about carbon fiber is it's able to give us that lightness while also being a pretty big size. But unfortunately, the Astra team doesn't really have a lot of experience working with carbon fiber. Actually, none at all. It's almost as if you have no business training at all. <laughs> I don't know what this is supposed to be. In order to overcome this gap in our knowledge, we've actually been practicing a little bit with how to wind these cylindrical structures with carbon fiber. The structures team was able to get into the lab and actually use the winding machine in order to create our first piece. It's not so big, but hey, it's got to start somewhere. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to slowly increase the size of the part that we make in order to get us to the point where we're actually making the full 244 millimeter diameter part that's going to be just over one meter long, which will form the test pressure vessel that we're going to make. Then in the end, ultimately, we're going to put this pressure vessel to the test and see if our CFRP manufacturing skills are really up to the challenge. The repulsion team is also making some progress in order to manufacture the fuel grain, which we're going to be using to power the rocket to the carbon line. Our fuel grain is made out of paraffin wax, which is basically just the waxes inside of candles. In order to make it into rocket fuel, we need to melt it and then pour it into our combustion chamber in a way that it can work as a hybrid rocket. And in order to do this, we need to create a paraffin manufacturing rig, which is able to do this for us. Our plan to do this is to actually spin the paraffin wax in order to create the cavity in the middle, which will allow the nitrous oxide to flow through it. Basically, we're going to use centripetal force in order to manufacture our paraffin grain. Over the last few weeks, the propulsion system has been designing this frame and has also managed to procure some elements in order to build it. So look out for the next couple of weeks for information about how this is going. But that's enough about Astra. Up next, we have some news about the Stratos program at the Delft Aerospace Rocket Engineers, or DARE. Stratos was a program which had the specific target of reaching the carbon line, kind of similar to Astra's target with the Transcendence rocket. The Stratos program also consisted of hybrid rockets powered by nitrous oxide and paraffin wax, also similar to Astra's rocket Transcendence. Seems like we've almost kind of copied them. <laughs> the Stratos program had some great progress, with multiple altitude records for the European and hybrid rocketry community. Stratos 1 was the first rocket in the European community to break the 10 km barrier. Next up was the Stratos 2, which pushed that boundary further, achieving a final altitude of 21 kilometers with their hybrid system. This also reset the European altitude record. Next up was Stratos 3, and this was supposed to be the rocket that was gonna hit the Carmen line. But unfortunately, they had some trouble with the stability of the flight and the rocket ended up breaking up. But that didn't deter the Stratos team. They decided to go back to the launch stand only a couple years later with their Stratos 4 vehicle, hoping to finally reach that Carmen line goal. But unfortunately, they had some difficulty with their valves and were unable to get the vehicle off the ground. Unfortunately, over the last couple of weeks, they released the information that they will be discontinuing the Stratos program. This is a bit of sad news and the Stratos rockets will certainly be missed. Stratos will always have its legacy of being one of the most developed rocketry systems in the European community. And we really have to say congratulations to all the students that were involved in this program at one point or another because it's truly an incredible program. 
But it's not all bad news. The real reason why DARE is discontinuing this program is actually to focus on its next program, which is Project Sparrow. DARE has actually set its sights on developing some liquid rocketry technology underneath the umbrella of Project Sparrow. And over the past couple of weeks, they've had some successes. DARE was able to finally test their new engine called Firebolt, which will be what powers Project Sparrow in the future. Firebolt is an engine which is powered by liquid oxygen and ethanol. This allows them to actually get some really high efficiencies, which will be able to power the rocket to higher heights, hopefully. During this test, they're able to fire up the engine for about two seconds and produce a total thrust of 11 kilonewtons, which is pretty high for an amateur rocketry system. Ultimately, they'll be targeting a total thrust of 15 kilonewtons and a burn duration of 40 seconds. And if you do the math, that means they're probably going for a carbon line attempt. So look out for the announcement that Sparrow is going for the carbon line. It's coming. We wish the DARE team all the best luck in the development of their Firebolt engine, and we look forward to some future testing that is surely to come. Finally, we have the Purdue Space Program, which is working on their Havoc rocket. The Purdue Space Program is developing a rocket to target an altitude of just 10,000 feet, or just over three kilometers. Similar to the Astra vehicle, they're also developing a rocket which is powered by nitrous oxide and paraffin wax. And actually, it'll kind of be similar to the specifications of our subscale rocket, which we're going to be developing this year, in order to test out our technologies that we're going to use on the final vehicle. In the end, the Purdue Space Program test assembly kind of looks like the one that we would be building next, so we kind of thought this would be interesting to feature to see uh, basically what this development kind of looks like. In the end, they're able to get about a five second stable ignition of the hybrid rocket and get some really interesting results that answer their questions with respect to the paraffin wax regression rate and the effectiveness of their injector in terms of balancing the pressure between the feed system and the pressure inside the combustion chamber. So we really look forward to the next developments with the Havoc rocket and what the Purdue Space Program has next in store. I'm sure that in the future, once they get this small scale rocket underneath their belt, they'll be able to go for higher heights like the Carmen line. There's lots of action in the student amateur rocketry community, and if you're looking to get involved, be sure to check out your university or your local area for places where you can maybe join a team. And if there's really nothing, make a team yourself. If you want to stay up to date with the amateur rocketry news, be sure to subscribe and give a like in order to help out the algorithm. And remember to expand your horizons.